Picking carrots in my grandparents' garden is probably my earliest memory of actually gardening. All root vegetables are fun for adults and kids because you never know what you're gonna get. Not to mention, some carrots can grow into some pretty interesting shapes. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to grow lots of carrots from seed to harvest, step by step. I'm also gonna let you in on three different ways to get carrot seeds to germinate successfully every time. In mild winter climates, carrot seed can be sown in the fall. In cold winter climates, you can sow carrot seed outdoors three to five weeks before your last frost date. Carrots don't like to be transplanted, so you'll need to sow the seeds directly into the garden. Carrots like full sun, but will grow with a minimum of four hours of direct sunlight. They like a moist, lightweight root run without a lot of nitrogen. Adding manure or other high nitrogen source to the soil will cause your carrots to twist and fork. Carrots are notoriously difficult to germinate, and that's because they don't like their seeds covered with soil. The problem is they also like to be consistently moist. So how do you not cover them with soil but keep them moist without having to go outside five times a day and water them? So I have two tips on how to keep carrot seeds moist in dry climates. And if you're in a humid climate or a rainy climate, at the end of the video, I've got a really great tip for everyone that will actually cut the time in half that it takes carrots to sprout, which typically is 14 days. So if we can cut that in half, you're closer to your harvest from the very beginning. So the first tip, I'm gonna move aside the mulch to expose some soil. Make sure you pre-soak the area so the soil is nice and wet. I'm gonna sprinkle my seeds along the row, scattering as far apart as possible, but we have a fix for that later. Then I'm gonna take a piece of scrap wood and lay it directly on top of the seeds. It's not that carrots need sunlight to germinate. However, their seeds are so small, they're not packed with a ton of energy, which means they don't have enough energy to push themselves up through the soil to get at the sunlight. So covering it with wood keeps the moisture in, and every few days you can lift the wood and mist them if needed. But after about a week, you're going to check on it every day, and as soon as you see about 50% of the seeds sprouted, remove the wood. You wanna check under the wood daily though, because if they sprout and are left under there too long, it'll be the same as if you buried them under soil. They won't be able to find the light and they will just die. After removing the wood, keep them watered well. But very quickly, the seedling will produce a little taproot, basically the future carrot, and that will go deep enough to reach a level where if you water every day or two, the soil stays moist. The second tip I just discovered this spring by trying a couple of things. I covered half my seeds with vermiculite and the other half with pine shavings, basically pet bedding. You can see a few weeks later, the vermiculite side has much spottier growth than the pine shavings. I used those two materials because they would both let light in and are very lightweight. As soon as the germination happens, they can find their way through a thin layer of either of those to find the light. However, it looked like the pine shavings did a better job of keeping the moisture in the soil. This is them now eight weeks later. Now with both of these methods, you're still gonna need patience because the typical germination time for carrots is about two weeks. Now remember, stick around in just a minute, I'm gonna show you how to cut that time in half. Because carrot seeds are so small, all but the most patient people will have to thin them. And I say that because I would never have the patience to take each individual seed and place it uh, an inch apart. They're just too small. So once the carrots are up and have their first true leaves, not the seed leaves that look flat, but the first leaves that look like ferny carrot leaves, you wanna make sure you thin your carrot seedlings so there's at least an inch or two between each one. Cut off all the rest at ground level. I prefer to cut them off rather than pull them out because I feel like pulling them out when they're kind of close together under the soil messes up the roots that are on the ones you're gonna keep. But however you do it, you need to do it. And they're not wasted because carrot leaves actually taste like carrots. So throw them on your salad. Keep carrots moist throughout the season and they will grow fast. The only way to truly know if a carrot is ready to harvest is to brush the soil away from the base of the plant to expose the top of the carrot root. If it looks to be the diameter it should be, it's time to pull it. The last thing I wanna to touch on before we get to the bonus is companion planting. Now, carrots actually make great companion plants themselves. Did you know that carrots produce beautiful flowers? The carrot family consists of many flowering plants that we already grow as edibles, such as carrots, celery, cilantro, dill, fennel, parsley, and even a few we would typically grow in a flower border, such as Amy Magus and Queen Anne's Lace. 
What they all have in common are flat, umbel or umbrella-shaped blooms. It is these umbel-shaped blooms that are attracting beneficial insects such as hoverflies, lacewings, ladybugs, parasitic wasps, and hoverflies. Every year I let a few carrots go to flower to bring in these good bugs, but don't let all of them go to flower because the sugars that make the carrot sweet are what the plant uses to flower. So if you let them flower, the carrots aren't gonna be really good to eat. Carrots can benefit from companions as well. Cutworms can be very destructive to carrot seedlings and can wipe them out overnight. By planting thyme in your carrot bed a few weeks prior to the carrots, you'll attract damsel bugs who will feed on cutworms and carrot fly larvae. Carrot fly in some places is a major pest for your carrot crop. They find carrots through smell. You can mask this smell by planting a hedge of chives around your carrot patch. The strong chive smell will confuse them and persuade them to look elsewhere. Lacewing larvae are voracious aphid predators. Attract adult lacewings to your carrot patch by companion planting with Cosmos. Okay, now the pre-sprouting bonus. For this, you need a paper plate, some indoor potting mix or seed starting mix, a Ziploc plastic baggie, carrot seeds of course, and a freezer. You're gonna take the carrot seeds and sprinkle them kind of liberally across the potting mix, make sure it's pre-moistened. And you don't have to worry about spacing right now because we're not planting them in their final location. We're just pre-sprouting them. Then you can just firm them into the soil and you're still gonna be able to see them, but we're gonna slip it inside the plastic bag and zip it shut. This is now gonna go into the freezer for 24 hours, no more, no less. And that is going to trick the carrots into thinking they've had a winter. And then when you bring them out of the freezer the next day, they're gonna think they've had that winter, be excited to grow and get ready to germinate. You can put them on top of your refrigerator or some kind of appliance that just kind of gives them a little bit of bottom heat. If it's still warm outside, you can just put them right in the shade. You don't wanna put them in the sun though, the bag will cook them. Within just a few days, you're going to start seeing carrots sprouting. Now I sewed these in a bag about a week prior to this. I caught this probably 24 hours later than optimal. You really just wanna see white roots sprouting out and no green. There's a little green here, but it will be okay. Once you get to this stage, choose a spot in preferably full sun, but again, they can get by on four hours of, sh of sun per day. And then you're gonna take the seeds and the potting mix, all of it, and you're gonna scatter them around. Or if you're growing in a line, put them in a line. Now, if they do have green on top like these, you're gonna cover them very, very lightly. If it's just the sprouts, you still need to cover them as well, but with some more indoor potting mix, but not necessarily as lightly. You just want them covered so you don't see the white sprouts. Keep the area well watered for the, a couple of days. You probably want to water every day, but then that root's going to get down deep enough where it can go a couple of days between waterings. If you want to see what other fall crops you can put in now, give this video a click. I'll see you next time.